Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on the new 9th edition rules. As always, my name is Jay, and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about terrain. Now terrain kind of, it mattered a little bit in 8th edition, I found, but in many games it kind of just played a small part. Um, many armies that I play ignore terrain, or ignore cover, and then there was the fly special rule which made it very powerful, like fly was really powerful against things in terrain, and you know monster creatures and bikes can't jump up terrain, which stays in this edition, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. So a lot of people in 8th edition found that it just, terrain didn't play the role that it's supposed to. Now terrain is, in my opinion, really supposed to play an important role on uh, in these games it is very much so right it, it's designed so that it it's supposed to be um just a part of the game you know that it, it's it's a lot of fun it adds another layer to the game it adds more fun to the game it adds some strategy to the game but it wasn't really happening in eighth edition and games workshop really took note because one of the most impacted things in the book is terrain which now has a crazy amount of rules um, I'm going to recommend maybe getting post-it notes or some, some cheat sheets about each type of terrain. I'm going to type some up for me and my games um, to go over each type of terrain. And I'm going to go over the terrain types in this video. And so there's a huge impact to all the types of terrain. So in 9th edition 40k terrain, uh, no matter what type of terrain piece you have, it's comprised of a category and possibly a set of terrain traits. Um, there are four terrain categories that we're going to be going through today. Um, there's hills, there's obstacles, there's area terrain, which comprises the majority. Uh, obstacles and area terrain will comprise the majority of terrain pieces on your tabletop, and buildings. Um, and so it's uh, those ones. And then there's also a set of terrain traits. And so no matter what type of terrain you have on the battlefield, it'll have a, uh, a category, which lines up to the rules you know associated with movement, um, and, and um, how line of sight is determined, and then also some traits which dictate, you know, what is the bonus, what are the rules attached to that specific terrain. So let's get started. So as I said, there are four categories of terrain. So it's hills, obstacles, area terrain, and buildings. The first one is hills. So as you can see, like nature. So that's cool. So models moving over it, move over normal rules for movement. Of course, you just measure up and measure down if moving. Um, models use normal rules to determine if models are behind the, the hills visible. So for example, so in this example, hills just you have to keep looking at for line of sight. If they can see each other over the hill, they can shoot at each other or assault each other. So in this case, the gene steer call models and the primary marines can both see each other over the hill, allowing them to shoot at one another. Up next, we have the second type, which are obstacles. As I mentioned, obstacles will be um, scattered throughout the, the terrain if you're playing on a, a pretty dense table. Uh, obstacles typically include barricades, ruined walls, and other battlefield debris that your models have to move over or around. Makes sense. Um, an infantry, beast, or swarm model that receives the benefit of cover from an obstacle while is within three inches of that terrain feature. Unless, when you resolve the attack that targets that model's unit, you can draw a straight line one millimeter thickness to every part of that model's base from a single point on the attacking model's base without any of those lines passing through or part of a terrain feature. Basically what that means, let's go, let's go to a quick example here. So, here's an easy example. The three gene sewer call models are on one side of the barrier, of the obstacle. The space marines are on the other side. Since they can't draw a straight line to any of the, the models here, from one base to another, without going through the terrain piece, these models would receive the benefit of cover if being shot by the space marines. However, if they're on this side of the obstacle, the same side of the obstacle that the Space Marines are on, as you can see, you can clearly draw lines from their base to their base uh, with no obscuring of the obstacle. So in this particular case, there would be no benefit of cover from the obstacle itself. It would just be the normal armor saves uh, affected by AP of the weapons. So when it comes to obstacles, um, models move over obstacles using normal movement rules. Models use normal rules to determine if models behind the obstacles is visible. 
Obstacles cannot be attacked. And infantry, beasts, and swarm models receive the benefits of cover while within three inches of that uh, terrain piece. Unless, unless you get a straight line, it can be drawn, for example, the, the second example, where the gene studer cult models are behind them and can shoot them from behind. Uh, they don't get the benefit of cover, which makes sense. Now, the third type of terrain is called area terrain. Now, this will make up as a, the vast majority of the terrain I use in games will be considered area terrain. Now, area terrain includes ruins, woods, craters, and other terrain features that models can move into and through. Um, so, basically, each time, it, this is what the, the rules say, each time an area terrain feature is set up on the battlefield, both players must agree upon the footprint of that feature. So, there has to be a physical footprint of the terrain feature. Um, so basically what I recommend is squaring off the ends or you know anything uh, uh, through the lines of it. Uh, anything inside that is the footprint of that terrain feature because area terrain has to have a footprint. So here are the things with the, um, the area terrain. Inventory, beasts, and swarm models receive the benefit of cover from area terrain features while they're within it. So once again, only infantry, beasts, or swarm models. So the interesting thing about this is vehicles do not get, um, vehicles won't get this, monster creatures won't get this. So there's going to be a lot of, of killing and, and this terrain features will not um, help a lot of the uh, things on the table. As I said, vehicles won't get any benefit of cover. So bikes, that's going to be unfortunate. Uh, inventory, beasts, and swarm models. Cool. So um, the footprint is the boundary of terrain feature at the ground level. Models move over area terrain using normal rules of movement unless there's a, um, you know, a, a specific trait um, that changes it. Uh, models use nor uh, normal rules to determine if model behind area terrain is visible. And area terrain cannot be attacked. Infantry, beasts, and swarm models receive the benefit of cover while they're within it. And then the final one, buildings. Now buildings are really going to be used in a few games, but buildings are basically um, fortifications. So if you are taking a fortification in your list, that is defined as a building. Um, it, so it says buildings are typically units with the fortification battlefield role and the building keyword, and that are part of the player's army. Um, buildings are considered to be units rather than terrain features. Buildings cannot move across, uh, sorry, models cannot move across buildings. Uh, models use normal rules to determine if model behind the building is visible. And enemy buildings can be attacked. So, that's cool. So those are the four, as I said, those are the four key categories of terrain. I use hills occasionally in games, so that's cool. I don't really use buildings. Um, but I use a tons of area terrain and tons of obstacles. And now, we're going to go through the, uh, the types of terrain traits. And then in my final part, I'm going to actually go through specific terrain features that you would use in a game and which rules are associated with each one. So the first terrain trait is called defensible, and it's really cool. If every model in an infantry unit is within three inches of an obstacle terrain feature with this trait, then it can either do one of two things. The first one is hold steady. And by hold steady, if you decide to overwatch, you get to overwatch and hit on five ups instead of six ups, which is fantastic. Or set to defend. Now set to defend, you don't overwatch whatsoever, but you get plus one to hit rolls, uh, sorry, to, to attack rolls. Um, yeah, when resolving attacks made with melee weapons by models in that unit until the end of the fight phase. So to hit rolls, as I said. So that's pretty cool. So if you decide not to, uh, if you decide not to overwatch, you actually get to hit on like most things two ups or three ups in close combat. It's pretty cool. And I think this is going to be used a lot in the game, knowing what has defensible. Um, this is going to be used a lot because you're only going to choose to overwatch with one squad. So that one squad will get to overwatch, but defense, uh, but um, the the set to defend, um, it, you know, you choose the one to shoot and then the rest of them get bonuses to their hit rolls. Pretty cool. And in the next video, I'm going to go over actually close combat. Uh, the next one is defense line. So defense line, um, you can make a, a charge move against a unit within one inches of a terrain feature, right? So this is good for like obstacles. Um, so if they're up against the feature, like they're up against a, um, a little blockade, you can assault them basically as long as you end up within um, an inch of the terrain feature, you can engage the, the opponent. 
and you can fight if within two inches of the enemy. Breachable is a rule that means infantry, beast, and swarm models can move through walls, girders, chains, and foliage. So basically, like a ruin, only smaller models can move through the walls. Big models must move around. Difficult ground is the next one. Difficult ground means subtract two inches from making a normal move, and advance, fall back, or charge move through this terrain feature, unless they have the word fly in their model, you know, unless they can fly, which makes sense. So this is one that's gonna slow down the movement of your squads. Up next, we have Dense Cover. Now, Dense Cover has a lot of um, wording, but uh, if this feature is at least three inches in height, then subtract one from the hit roll when resolving an attack with a ranged weapon unless you can draw straight lines one millimeter in thickness to every part of at least one model's base um, in the target unit from a single point on the attacking model's base without any of those lines passing over or through any part of any terrain feature with this trait. Wow, that is a huge mouthful, but basically sums up to this. Subtract one from hit rolls if the feature is more than three inches tall and you can't draw a perfectly straight line from base to base, minus one to hit. Does not apply to models that are only shooting through their own terrain feature, and there's no penalty when shooting at aircraft units or units with a wound characteristic of 18 plus, so knights, right? Big titanic models aren't gonna get the uh, benefit of this, this terrain, makes sense. Up next, unstable position, and as you can say, unstable position basically means a, a model cannot be set up or end its movement on top of this uh, terrain feature. Next one is exposed position. So models do not receive benefits of cover while on top of this terrain feature. Obscuring blocks visibility if at least five inches tall. Models on or within can see and be seen normally. So this is referring to if the models are um, behind this five inch tall uh, terrain piece. Aircraft models and models with wound characteristics 18 plus um, can be seen normally. So this is an interesting example that I'll be going over after with the terrain piece that uh, one can see one, but one can't see the other, basically. Light cover. The light cover is basically what we've been used to in the previous edition. Uh, no, sorry, uh, the plus one to wound rolls, but that's it's a slightly different than this one. So light cover is now plus one to saving throws against ranged weapons, as it was before, right? That makes sense. So plus one if you're in cover. Uh, invulnerable saves are unaffected. Makes sense. Heavy cover, though, which is now a really important part of a lot of these rules as well. Plus one to saving throws against uh, melee weapons. So if you are in heavy cover, you actually get a saving throw in... Uh, bonus in close combat, which is pretty cool. Unless model has made a move, a charge move this turn. So the assaulting squad doesn't get the bonus, but the defending squad does. And normal saves are unaffected. Scalable. Scalable is basically the floor is lava rule. I called it from last edition. It's still in effect. Uh, only infantry, beast, swarm, and fly models can be set up or move on top of this terrain feature, excluding ground floor. So you can move ground floor, you just can't go upwards. Infantry, beast, and swarm models can move through the floors, ceilings, and gantries. And inspiring. This is only for statues. Now, I don't think I have a statue in today's video, so I'll just mention it. Uh, statues have the inspiring rule, plus one leadership if wholly within six inches. Cool. So those are the traits and the categories. So now let's go through um, some common terrain features in which um, I, I would really see on the battlefield. The first one, of course, is ruins. Let's start off with ruins because ruins are really uh, what I put on my battlefield as well. So up first we have ruins, just like this small ruined building. And this is a common, uh, this is one of the most commonly used terrain features in Warhammer 40k. So. Ruins have a few rules. Number one, of course, they're area terrain. So before the match, you should always establish a footprint with your opponent. In some cases, probably people just close off the corners here. So go from corner to corner and anything inside here would get uh, the benefit of cover. And it has a few rules associated with it. It is scalable, meaning, of course, that infantry models, beasts, and swarms can go up or down levels. Um, but anything other than those can't finish anything except for the, the ground floor. 
It also has breachable, so of course infantry swarms and beasts can move through the walls as well if need be. It has light cover, so that is the plus one to armor saves uh, if they're being targeted by a ranged attack. And uh, defensible, so if, you get, if they get assaulted, they get either overwatch, plus one overwatch, so five up to hit for overwatch, or plus one to hit in the following fight phase for their attacks. And it is obscuring. And so obscuring, so if the, if the thing is at least five inches tall, Models on or within it can seen can be seen as normal, but uh, aircraft models and wound characteristics of 18 plus can be seen um, normally. So let's go over an example for this one. So here's an example of obscuring for your rules. On a, here's a terrain feature that's a ruin that's over five inches tall. On one side we have some Gene Sierra cult models, and on the other side an Imperial Knight model. As you can see here, the Imperial Knight. It's pretty cool. It's very big. So in this case, particularly, the Imperial Knight can't see them, but they can see the Imperial Knights. So the little guys can shoot the, uh, the Imperial Knight on one side, but the Imperial Knight cannot see and shoot them unless they are on or inside the terrain feature. And that's obscuring in a nutshell. Another common uh, terrain type that is used on battlefields is craters. So let's go through crater special rules. So, here's an example of a crater. They're all inside the crater, therefore they all get cover. Uh, craters are area terrain, of course, because it does have a footprint. And it is light cover and difficult ground. So light cover, of course, as I mentioned in my previous example, it's plus one to saving throws against ranged weapons. And normal saves are unaffected. And um, it is difficult ground so that it, it slows down um, the movement through it, so it's minus two inches to movement, uh, whether it not be regular movement, falling back, or charge rolls. Up next, as you can see in some people's games, armored containers. I have a few, so let's see what armored containers mean for the game. Up next we have armored containers. Armored containers are obstacles, obviously, so you can move a, uh, around them, you can move on top of them, um, because they, they're just, you know, you can climb on top, you can climb around them, you can go around them. There's an obstacle, they don't have a footprint, as long as it's an infantry model, a uh, swarm, or beast. Uh, they can receive the benefit of cover while they're within three inches of the, uh, the terrain feature, of course. And these things have a few rules. So they have light cover, scalable, and exposed position. So, exposed position means, of course, once they're on top, of the terrain feature, since they're on top of it and someone shoots them, they are completely exposed, they don't get the benefit of cover. And then the other two, uh, light cover, so plus one to, uh, to armor saves from ranged weapons, and scalable, meaning of course they can climb up it. The fourth one, barricades and fuel pipes. So next we have barricades and fuel pipes. A barricade is right here. Barricades and fuel pipes are obviously obstacles because they don't have a footprint. Um, they do have several rules attached to it. Number one, defense line, which is that uh, you can you can a unit can charge against them. So if a unit of Genesteer cult models wanted to assault in, as long as they get within an inch of the barricade and that they're up against it, they can assault them as long as they're more you know two inches away from those models. They're engaged. Uh, it also is light cover plus one against ranged weapons. Uh, to armor saves, so, sorry, pl yeah, plus one armor saves against ranged weapons. It also has heavy cover, which means plus one armor saves against melee attacks since they have to stab through the terrain piece. And only these guys would receive them, not them, because they made the charge. Defensible, meaning that they get plus one overwatch, so hitting on five ups, or plus one to hit rolls in the fight phase. Unstable position, meaning you cannot end on top of the terrain piece and difficult ground, so it, it's uh, minus two inches to move through the terrain piece. In today's video, I don't have any examples of woods, so let's just go over the rules of woods as, we, um, as they exist. So woods are area terrain, as I discussed, of course they make sense for the area terrain, so they have to have a footprint. And they have terrain traits, a dense cover, which as we said, so dense cover is the uh, subtract one hit rolls, for, uh, made with ranged weapons if at least three inches tall. If, so if the forest is more than three inches tall, minus one to hit rolls. Does uh, not apply to 
if you're shooting through it, and of course, um, no penalty for air uh, if you're shooting against aircrafts or um, Titanic, you know, monster cre like things with 18 plus wounds. It also has breachable, and breachable is infantry beasts and swarm models can move through the walls, girders, and foliage. Defensible, which is the um, Which is the that if you get assaulted, you can either you know plus one Overwatch or plus one hit roll in the following fight phase. It has difficult ground, and difficult ground is the uh, minus two to normal movement, fallbacks, charge distances, except if you have the fly roll. That makes sense. So that is woods. Up next, we have battlefield debris. Up next, we have battlefield debris. It's a pretty simple one. It basically doesn't mean much on the battlefield. It is a category obstacle, of course, because it doesn't take up a footprint. You can move on top of it and around it. And exposed position, meaning that once you get on top of it, you are completely exposed. So, cool stuff there. The seventh type of train is industrial structure. Up next, we have industrial structure. Like this, uh, as you can see, it's industrial structure right here. So industrial structures are area terrain, of course, because they take up a footprint. They have several rules, scalable, so they can move up or down as long as they're infantry, or they can fly, or beasts or swarms. Breachable, so they can move through the walls if need be. They also have dense cover, which means subtract one from hit rolls for ranged weapons if they're if this is at least three inches tall, which this is. Uh, of course, it doesn't apply to the large, you know, 18 plus wound monsters, creatures, or, or, you know, titanic models or flyer models. And, uh, of course, it has defensible as well, which means the uh, they either get the choice of hold steady, plus which is overwatch at 5 up, or uh, set to defend, which is add 1 to hit rolls in the following fight phase. As I mentioned, I don't have a statue, but the 8th type is Imperial Statuary. Now, Imperial Statuaries are obstacles, which makes sense because they're not a footprinted area terrain. Um, they have light cover, so if, again, if you can you know hide behind them, uh, if it's possible, hide behind them and get line of sight. It's plus one saving throws against ranged weapons, and normal saves aren't affected. Um, you have unstable position, so you can't put your model on top of a statue. Makes sense. And inspiring for Imperium, so plus one leadership if they're within if they're holding within six inches of the statue. And the final type is ruined walls. Now I don't have any ruined walls for this example, so I'm just going to talk about them quickly. So ruined walls are terrain type obstacles because once again you can always move around them they don't have a footprint makes sense uh, they have defense line so defense line as i've said in my previous ones is you can make charges against the if your opponents are right up against the wall you can charge the wall as long as you're within one inch of the wall and two inches of the opponent you can assault breachable which is infantry beasts and swarm models can move through the the walls as normal uh, dense cover which is the uh, subtract one hit rolls if it's more than three inch uh, from range weapons, if it's more than three inches in height, doesn't impact you know uh, knights and flyers. Uh, defensible, which gives them the cool you know either hold steady or set to defend rules, and unstable position, so you can't be placed on top of a wall. That makes sense. So there you go. Those are examples of every terrain common terrain feature that is commonly seen in Warmer 40k with the attached rules and the terrain traits. So as I said, so with this edition, the one of the biggest changes is terrain. It will impact the game. I do recommend maybe creating some cheat sheets on the terrain types that are frequently used in your games, and that way you can keep track of all the rules attached with each terrain type, because there are a lot, and as I mentioned, there are four categories of terrain, and with each one there could also be traits as well. Um, the four terrain categories are hills, which I already gone through, Obstacles and area terrain, which will make up the majority of your game features, and buildings if you want to bring some fortifications. And there are a variety of traits attached with your common features. Well, that's it. That's terrain in a nutshell. And it's going to become incredibly important with the smaller uh, battlefield sizes that are now in the games. It's, it's, uh, 
if you want to play by the recommended size, it's actually a much smaller table size, and uh, it's going to be loaded with terrain, so it's going to be a lot of fun. So, as always, what do you think about the new terrain rules? Leave comments in the comment section down below, and let's create a discussion on the new rules of 9th edition Warmer 40k. Stay tuned for more videos on 9th edition Warmer 40k. As always, my name is Jay, and this video is brought to you by my Patreon subscribers. As you can see, their names go by my heads because of them that I keep making these videos. If you want to help support my videos, please link, link, uh, click on the link in the description below and help support my videos. Stay tuned for more 9th edition videos. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting.